What's up guys, welcome back to the Mullis Race Cars Ultimate Bracket Dragster Build Series. As you guys can see, the Mullis is here behind me. It's kind of chaotic in the middle of wiring right now. But in today's video, I actually wanna touch on the steering wheel setup for this thing because this is the ultimate Bracket Dragster Build. We had to do something crazy and weird and ultimate for the steering wheel as well. So I'm pretty pumped about how that turned out. I wanna show you guys that. And as well as a couple pretty big announcements at the end of this video uh, that you guys are gonna like. So stay tuned. All right guys, so check it out. Here I have the steering wheel for our new Mullis. As you guys can tell, I went a little bit different path with, uh, with the steering wheel relative to what I am used to relative to what I'm, you know, you typically see like in my M&M &M car, I have like a more of a flat D style steering wheel. This time we went with the butterfly steering wheel. Uh, I've never raced with a butterfly wheel before, uh, but I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to try it out. And I kind of figured this is my opportunity to kind of set up one up exactly how I want it. Give it an honest go uh, because I've always, you know, been interested in trying a steering wheel of this style before. I talk to a lot of great racers, and uh, I think what interests me most about a butterfly style wheel is just the fact of being able to, to place your hand in such a way that feels comfortable to me on the trans brake button. Whereas if you can imagine doing this on a D style wheel, this part of your hand is kind of smashing right into the actual steering wheel part if that makes any sense so uh for me it was something that i wanted to try because you know when i'm using the practice tree i i feel comfortable like this on the button and the butterfly wheel actually kind of allowed me to get a little bit closer to what i'm used to doing on the practice tree inside the car so that's kind of the reasons why i switched to this style wheel another thing that i want to talk about here is just all of these buttons as you guys know in some of these bracket cars you end up with a lot of buttons on your steering wheel which then causes you to have a lot of cords going back behind your dash and it just gets clumsy messy cluttered doesn't look good have four or five of those curly q cables kind of all tangled up headed back behind your dash I did not like that, and that's where kind of this project got a little bit more involved, was to try and uh, remedy that issue and come up with something kind of cool, unique, new, reliable, uh, and, and that's what I'm excited to show you guys today. So the path I went down was actually, I kind of stole the idea, I kind of got the initial idea from a product that you can find on the Motion Raceworks website, where what they have is basically a uh, monocord system with like a Deutsch connector, quick disconnect, that enables you to run four buttons on your steering wheel with one cord. And when I saw that, I thought, man, that's what I need, that's what I wanna do. Problem I ran into immediately is that I wanted five buttons on my steering wheel instead of four. So their system is only capable of using four buttons. So then I got down this path of, well, I'm gonna figure it out myself, I'm gonna kinda design it myself, I'm gonna make it capable of five buttons. So there's actually several iterations of this design and uh, you know, I kinda threw some money at a couple things that didn't work, right? To actually end up where I am with this steering wheel setup today. Initially, I was able to find a 10 conductor cord, a coil style cord that had 10 conductors inside that I was gonna be able to run my five buttons with. I went ahead and got that and then I got a 12 conductor Deutsch connector. So I was pretty much a very similar design to what those guys at Motion Raceworks have out for the four button style. The problems I ran into uh, involved a couple things. The 10 conductor curl cable was just really thick, really stiff, uh, wasn't super flexible as it needed to be. And it was very difficult for me to come up with a way to get that all mounted in here uh, with a Deutsch connector, which is a pretty large connector, like a 12C Deutsch connector, it ends up being about that wide by about that tall. And then you gotta have all the cables connected to the back of that and strain relief was a problem. So in order to try and incorporate some strain relief and durability into the back of that connector, I ended up with something that was like this long sticking out of the bottom of the steering wheel. And then when I mounted it in the car and turned the steering wheel, that curly cable ended up getting way too close to the dash. Like I was afraid it was gonna be able to actually like 
hit the switches on the switch panel or hit the switches on my pro cube or any other buttons on the dash and i just i didn't want to go down that road uh you got to get it right which kind of brought me to the fork in the road in this uh, design process and kind of landed closer here so taking a look at this steering wheel you'll notice that i opted for the two button front panel uh this this button mount with the front button mount panel portion, it, that actually came from American Race Cars, um, which bolts into just a standard butterfly style wheel. Uh, you can grab it off of several different sites. American Race Cars is what I chose. Uh, RBZ has them as well. But I chose the two button front, single button up top, and then I actually wanted to have buttons accessible while my hands are on the steering wheel a little bit better, right? You see what I got going on here? So we actually have one, two, three, four, five buttons on this steering wheel, and I got them spread out a little bit better. I kind of just, I wanted to come up with a design that was specifically tailored to the user interface of this race car that I desired. I wanted it to be exactly how I wanted it to be. This might not make sense for everyone, but this is how I wanted it. In case you're curious of what all these buttons are going to be, obviously I have my trans brake button, have my bump down button as well as engaging my pro stage starting line enhancer up on top is the bump up button over here on my right index finger it's just a two-step for doing burnouts so i like to have my hands on the steering wheel while i'm doing a burnout but also be able to hold down that button very very easily and then of course on the opposite side kind of a similar situation down track if i want to engage in nitrous i do have that on the button so i can keep my hands on the steering wheel while i'm using those two buttons that are the car is in motion while needing those two buttons. So that's why I chose to put those two right there. All of these other buttons, the car is sitting on the starting line, obviously. So not quite as critical to, you know, you can get up here and you don't need to have both hands on the steering wheel when the car stopped. In order to accomplish this, of course, I had to make some side panels for the steering wheel as I just kind of cut out some laser pieces. And then there's also some other mounts inside, which is really inside is where the most interesting part of this uh, really comes into play. Let me throw this on the race car and then uh, we'll Kind of dive into the wiring a little bit more look you guys are gonna have to ignore some of this messy wiring we're in the middle of this we're getting actually close on some of this wiring uh, but we're gonna save that for another video once we get it all the way done but uh, ignore this for now Ugh. so here in the car you can see that we have accomplished the goal of just one singular cable coming out of the steering wheel and going back behind the dash as you can see it kind of comes up to a terminal here and it's a six conductor, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a six conductor cable coming out of that steering wheel. So how this is kind of set up is there's obviously five buttons on the steering wheel. So uh, each one of those buttons needs a wire returning from it. So then what we ended up doing is we actually brought our 12 volts onto the steering wheel as a common. So there's one 12 volt coming onto the steering wheel and then it gets split up actually on the steering wheel inside of here and uh, goes to each button so each button will then complete the circuit send a signal down here we can use the buttons for what we need to use the buttons for so we ended up with a single curly cable lightweight thin i mean this thing's like a wet noodle you guys we have no issues uh it curls up on the steering column just how you'd like it to um, i don't have any concerns with that I uh, really like how that turned out. So I know this is really difficult to see in here, but I'll do my best to try and explain. So this is, as you can see, a little six conductor. I believe this is an M12 connector, uh, which will then feed directly into this M12 bulkhead connector. And on the other side of that, it feeds into here, which is, you can imagine, kind of like a wiring harness. That's going to go ahead and split that 12 volts off into the five different buttons it needs to head towards. And then, of course, we have one return from each button uh, also, you know, in there and uh, coming back down the cable. So um, inside of here, in order to make these buttons, you know, still be replaceable instead of just, you know, soldering them in there permanent, obviously we want to be able to uh, service this and change out buttons if we need to. Uh, still very easy to do that. Um, what I actually incorporated here is called an XT30 connector. And this is a connector that I kind of knew about or learned about inside of the RC car world. So, uh, you know, drones, 
uh, RC cars that you're out bashing, this is your battery connection on some of those smaller models. So uh, this can handle a lot of vibration, a really good, uh, easy to use, uh, fits tight connector. Uh, just got them in black there, kind of uh, got everything organized up. And that's kind of how the wiring is set up. Now, of course, that's not going to be easy to do if you're at the racetrack and replace a button like that. But I figure if I'm at the racetrack, I'm just going to pop that button out, cut it out of there, put a new button in, and I'll just run an additional, like in this case, a second curly cord all the way back to these terminals and hook them up in the appropriate spot. So uh, that's kind of the plan if we're in like a, a thrash situation between rounds. Um, but um, as you can probably notice, uh, this threaded connection, it's not as fast as like something that's a quick connect. It's not as fast as a Deutsch connector. I get that. Uh, but what it is, is a very strong connection, very reliable connection, uh, a lot of great strain relief in this. And honestly, I don't plan on taking this steering wheel off all that often. And I'm not a kind of guy that takes that steering wheel off to get in and out of the car. Uh, I just want to be able to take it off but it ain't gonna happen real often, to be honest with you. You guys have a big announcement for you today as I've been building out this beautiful Mullis Race Cars Dragster behind me, and I realized just how awesome this car is and just how great a job the team over at Mullis did on it. It got me thinking I need to get another one of these cars into the hands of one of you guys. So what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be doing exactly that, a brand new 2024 Mullis Dragster Chassis. It's gonna be going home with one of you guys. We're doing 200 spots at just $100 per spot. And someone's gonna be taking home a brand new chassis just like this one you see behind me. GolfstarTV.com is the place you're gonna go. Browse over to our online store, pick up some of those spots while they're hot. And we're gonna be drawing the winner at the Golf Stars and Stripes $100,000 drag race that's happening July 6th at Tri-State Raceway. And you do not need to be present to win. So it don't matter if you're East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Down South, wherever you are, if you need to get your hands on a brand new Mullis Dragster for just $100 per spot, go and scoop them up at GolfStarTV.com while they're available. And we're gonna be drawing that winner on the Golf Star TV live stream from that $100,000 drag race, July 6th. Something crazy right here, you guys, the Mullis body inside of this crate uh, it's actually getting crated up. It's getting ready to be taken out to get some fresh paint on this baby, you guys. Uh, you know, we just didn't want to haul a trailer all the way out there to get this thing painted. So the old man, you know, he got this idea. He's like, hey, let me build a crate. Um, I'll make sure this thing is safe. Uh, we'll get a lot of padding in here, foam padding. We'll get everything kind of crated up. You know, we're putting some tail lights on the back of this thing. We're gonna haul this out there in a pickup and we won't have to, you know, tow everything out with the trailer. We're gonna save a little fuel money, uh, things like that. Uh, so more on that coming soon, as uh, you guys are gonna be excited once you see what gets laid out on this beautiful carbon body from Mullis. It's gonna be incredible. You know what else is new? I listed my m and I listed my old car. I've only put it on Facebook so far. I haven't put it on like Racing Junk or anything like that. You guys, I actually listed my old dragster for sale. Uh, I don't know if that's a sad moment or not. I, I'm not feeling it right now, but everybody in the comments when I listed it are like, oh my gosh, I hate to see that car go. I mean, I've seen that car so many times on the internet or I've seen it you know, in, in real life watching it, always watching with that car. I can't believe that, you know, it's kind of making me a little bit emotional, you know, I just, you know, so that, that is posted. If you guys are interested in a great 2006 M&M uh, that's been kept up to date, an excellent car, uh, go ahead and check that out. So that, that car, it's also listed in the description below here if you're interested in a, uh, in a great bracket car that you've maybe seen a few times on this channel. So as you guys can see, I have a lot more work to do on this mullet, so I gotta get this one wrapped up. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, all the things that you do. Don't forget to hit the link down in the description, scoop up some of those spots while they are available for a brand new 2024 mullet chassis. I will see you guys in the next one. Later.